Right, so welcome to Curried Mustard, uh, the name of my show. I don't know how I came up with that name. I think it would be me. Because, um, you know, I am Indian. Uh, and I'm from India, but I also grew up here. I'm actually born in India. And so I think that's where the, uh, the name comes, of the mixing of curry and mustard. Plus, you know, who doesn't like curry on their mustard, right? <laughs> so, I, I've never tried it, that would be a good, good thing to do. Yeah, so welcome, this is Curry and Mustard, uh, I'm Joe Baines. Um, I'm, uh, I'm basically the, normally, I'm just the warm-up act. Uh, so my job is normally just to warm you guys up, get you guys relaxed for the real comedians. So if this is the porn industry, uh, I'd be the fluffer, basically. <laughs> so, anybody here not know what a fluffer is? You don't know what a fluffer is? <laughs> All right, well, um, the only answer I'm going to give you to that is asking afterwards. I, I, I did a show in, um, a few years ago, this is, I did a show in, uh, where was it? Henley, which is the posh part of, uh, of Windsor, right? And nobody in the, it was all old people. You know, when I say old people, over 50, right? And nobody in the audience knew what a fluffer was, so I had to go around and demonstrate it to every single person, right? That show overran. By two hours. <laughs> I even had to make house calls. I mean, uh, I'm not doing that tonight, that's basically what I'm saying. Um, the similar thing happened, I did it at the Bright Fringe, and there was a, again, there was a woman there, but she was much older than you, she probably looked about 60, 70. She was there with her husband, and she was like, oh, I don't know what it means. I was like, well, I'll ask your husband afterwards, and uh, I'll Google it. So anyway, the show finished, I'm putting the seats away, and she runs down the stairs, straight into my face, right? Comes this close, and she goes, I Googled it, and then runs straight out again. Like, didn't even stop. And I was like, all right, okay, so now she knows. I think that's probably where you're going to Okay, well, welcome, welcome to uh, Curry Mustard. Where did you see this? Because I didn't put it in, the, uh, in those groups. I don't know. All right. It just somehow came out. Okay, all right. She's in my Tantra groups. And I, I don't normally post this stuff in my Tantra group, so I was like, how did you hear about this? Uh, yeah, I'm surprised I'm like you. Uh, yeah, so, uh, so, yeah, so I'm... Uh... <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Coming in? Hello. Hi. Come in. Wow, okay, there's two seats at the front, three. <laughs> That's okay, that's all right. I was late as well, don't worry about it. Uh, where are you guys from? Canada. Oh, there you go, see? As soon as I saw him, I thought, ah, oh, he's Canadian, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like an Eskimo to me. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm, uh, uh, so I I've got to let you guys know before we start that I am, I'm not racist. Uh, but I do hate white people. Uh, that's all right. Apart from you, obviously. Uh, yeah, apart from you, yeah. Um, no, I did a show in, uh, I think, well, I did a gig, I think it was Birmingham, somewhere up north, right? Uh, it was past the M25, anyway. And, uh, and the MC comes up to me, but like, before I go on stage, he goes, look, if anybody does any racist stuff, I'm going to pull you off straight away. I was like, bloody hell, a white guy. Telling a brown guy not to be racist, right? I've got to be racist, right? And that's what we, we would do in that situation, yeah. So I was like, got to be racist. And I was on first. So I'm like walking up on stage, and in my head, all I've got is playing, it's got to be racist, got to be racist. I just couldn't think of anything at that moment. And then I, I look out at the audience, it's like 100 people, and they're all white. And so the only thought that came to my head was, I hate white people. So I just shouted it out, without even the mic, right? And the whole audience, you know, claps, cheers, the back row stands up. It's like, it is like amazing. And they go, yeah, so do we. And they're all white, right? I was like, I was not expecting that reaction, right? Like, not at all. It's like, wow, that worked. Okay. And so I did that a few times. And each time it worked. And I was like, wow, this is, this is, this is the, how it goes. You just got to hate white people. And they'll laugh at you, you know? So, and then I did a gig. I think my head just got too big. Uh, and I did a gig in Brixton. It was an urban gig, right? 
I got up on stage and see a black people, and I thought, obviously, it's got to work here, as well, right? So I shout, I hate black people! <laughs> that was not the response they gave me. They just looked at me, folded their arms and their legs, by the way, and they did that noise where they make that thing, right? <laughs> that one, right? And then they just shut up, and that was it. And it was the longest 10 minutes of my life, right? And at the end of it, I had to leave, and to leave, you know, you have to walk through the middle of the audience. And it's all black, but I was like, I'm gonna get lynched here. Um, like, and since then, I've never done that joke, you know? So, uh, but I got a good response here. So that was like, really good. Uh, I, but, you know, I've gotta explain why I hate white people, by the way. Uh, it's not white people I hate, it's white comedians. Because, do you know, they, they write their notes on their back of their hands. Have you seen that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah? When I try to do that, uh, I couldn't actually read it back. Because uh, I can't read uh, <laughs> my own handwriting. So, so I write my notes on a piece of paper. A white piece of paper. Because I'm racist. So, uh, just, uh, this is basically my set list. So, this is supposed to entertain you. This has been tested. This has been tried like over and over again, and it works. So if you don't laugh any of those jokes, it's, it's your fault. Do uh, <laughs> you, you guys heard of the uh, alcohol rating system? Do you know where a guy looks at a woman? I'm just gonna pick on you because you're in the front row, right? right? And, and he goes, oh, she's a six pinter, right? Guys do that, right? You're not, right? Um, but you know, women do the same thing. They'll look at a guy and they go, oh, he's about you know, five glasses of wine. Probably, right? Well, that system applies to comedians as well. So if you don't find a comedian funny, it's because you just haven't drunk enough, right? Mm -hmm. So for example, Michael McIntyre, he's been rated at one glass of shandy. Right? I've been rated at 16 pints <laughs> of tea. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite color, mate? Blue. Blue. And what about you, Maddie? Green, I'll tell you what my favorite color is, white. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, anybody here, I don't know if you can tell from my accent, I had, uh, one of the, I had a private education. Did anybody else have a private education? Right. Oh, you did as well, oh brilliant, yeah, probably went to the same school. Um, <laughs> no, I, I did this joke in, uh, in Oxford, right? And even the bar staff were putting their hands up. <laughs> right? In Slough, right? I had to explain to them what a school was. <laughs> my school was so... I, I actually grew up in India, just to let you know. Uh, and my school, I, I grew up in a village back with one of those back, back with little villages um, called Whitechapel. And, uh, <laughs> and our school was the, uh, the base of a tree. Like, the posh school had a whole tree, you know, <laughs> which is at the stump, so it was just... Uh -huh. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, so. Uh, anybody here do any kind of dating, you know, on, on dating apps or anything like that? No? I have done in the past. You have done in the past. <laughs> How long have you two been together? Uh, <laughs> this is the first date, right? Not the first date, no. Second? Uh, I've not really had that discussion then. Just, All right, I see, okay. Just, just that. No, that's all right. I don't know, you, just, you two look just so comfortable there, you know? I thought, oh, they've probably going out for years. Uh, let's pick on these, these two then. What about you two? How long have you been going out? You, and your brother and sister as well, now you can go. <laughs> nice. Six years? Six years, wow. That, you've just practically married, isn't it? We are married. Oh, you are married. All oh, right. Okay. Wow. That's impressive. Uh, what attracted you to him? Not that he's not attractive. <laughs> not uh, well, he was cute, you know, and like didn't smell. And... Well, I'm <laughs> setting the bar high. Wow. Well, he doesn't smell. So, uh, he has a shower every now and then. <laughs> And, and what about you to her? What attracted you to her? Now or... <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't smell or something, is that what it is? Uh, yeah, 
<laughs> shallow, it means shallow. <laughs> Me first. Uh, I'm Joe Baines. I've been voted as the Indian with the whitest name. <laughs> <laughs> By immigration. Uh, five years in a row. <laughs> but my full name is Joseph. ਮੇਰਾ <laughs> 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 Baines. Did you guys get that? Yeah. Of course you did, yeah. Now it's your go. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> That's racist! <laughs> no, it's just the Indian takeaway menu. <laughs> hey, just to memorize that. I know the brown is here going, no, it isn't. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's a good, good enough excuse. Where, where are you from, mate? I'm from India. You are? Okay. Uh, <laughs> so you understood what I said? Yeah. All oh, right, okay, so he's a North Indian. Uh, South Indians wouldn't understand. Yeah, I'm South Indian. But oh, you're South Indian. Yeah. And you understand North Indian language? Yeah. Bloody hell. Okay, damn it. I thought I knew about India. Clearly not, right? <laughs> well, so you, you, you learnt Punjabi in South India? Uh, like, my father was in army, so we... Oh, okay, that, that makes sense. All right. But, so I had um, I had one of these arranged marriages. You guys, you guys know about that? Mm. Yeah. My wife arranged everything. <laughs> <laughs> does, does your wife arrange things for you as well? No. All right. No, no, she was good. She was good. Like she knew how to arrange stuff. Like, I mean, she was a bit of a show off. So. She was so good at it that she arranged the divorce as well. So. <laughs> really nice. So. Quite enjoyed that. Which is why I'm doing this stuff now. Um, and you know about Indian weddings, right? Wow. Um, yeah. My wedding was so long, right? That by the end of it, we were seeing other people. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, I, I, we had like a, a mixed range marriage. like. Because uh, I'm from the very north of India, and she was fucking mental. So, um, yeah, so, good, good. That's, uh, that normally gets a laugh, but I, I think you're, we're getting sympathy for her now. Uh, because I'm a bit of a cunt, right? <laughs> I mean, uh, all right, this is, this is going to surprise Indians in the audience, but I actually know some facts about India. That, did you know that in a traditional Indian wedding, you end up with two wives? Did you guys know that? You didn't know that, right? You didn't know that. One is the woman I married, the other her mother. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know either of them. I met them both at the same time, arranged marriage, and they wouldn't sleep with me. So, uh, <laughs> my life, really. so which is good. Um, but my ex-wife was actually half Indian, half Scottish, right? Because uh, she loved curry, uh, deep fried. <laughs> And then, and do you know the difference between in-laws and outlaws? You guys know? Outlaws are wanted. <laughs> you can have my lot any day. Okay. Uh, Jesus. It was, uh, it was tough. Um, <laughs> anybody here on any kind of diet, by the way? You must be known. Uh, anybody? Wow, there's usually one person doing intermittent fasting or something. Or vegan. There must be some vegans in the ring, no? We were told about that. Yeah, that's true, yeah. <laughs> good point. That's a good point, yeah. Yeah, they were told. Hello, coming in, coming in. Are you a vegan? <laughs> <laughs> Am I a vegan, did you say? Yeah. Can be? Can be, there we go. I love mommy. I'm zero carb, um, keto is known as. Um, and, uh, but my friends call it as zero personality. <laughs> <laughs> my doctor calls it cocaine. <laughs> I mean, dealer, dealer. So he's in prison now, but it'd be nice uh, if anybody else opened up supplying cocaine. 
and if you do want to lose weight, by the way, you will lose a lot of weight. I've been on cocaine for two weeks, look at me. <laughs> no, it's, it's zero calorie. You burn a lot of calories in cocaine. Uh, I was actually, a few years ago, I was in, in Miami, and uh, I, was, I was there for the Tony Robbins thing, and uh, I ended up go, going to a party, right? And they had no alcohol at this party. Man, what am I gonna do here, right? But they had this long wooden table with loads of white lines on it. Right? And everybody was going up and doing three lines, right? And they were just going, come on, just do three lines. I was like, all right, fair enough. Didn't want to be a party people. So I did three lines as well. It turns out, if you've never taken cocaine before, uh, three lines is too many. Uh, basically, I overdosed. Uh, I spent 14 hours making faces at my phone. You know, like I recorded it, it was just me making faces, so, that was, uh, yeah. So, have you heard of this Jordan Peterson thing? You know? Yeah. Oh, right, of course, yeah, he's Canadian. He's a Canadian professor. He, he fought the um, self-identified movement some years ago. Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, obviously, he lost. Um, uh, and, I, you know, I, I, I actually agree with the self-identified movement. You know, I think, I think it's right that you should be able to self-identify whatever you want, right? For example, if somebody wanted to self-identify as a cat, you'd, you'd, you'd legally have to address them as a, as a pussy, right? Wouldn't you? <laughs> you know? like, if somebody wanted to self-identify as a Tory, legally... A cunt. A cunt, yeah, there you go. <laughs> and I, I agree with that, because I self-identify as well, you know? As white. Um, <laughs> and it is tough. It is tough being white. Um, I found that. Because I've been self-identifying for about two weeks now. And uh, you know there's this Black Lives Matter movement? Forget that. What we need is that White Lives Matter even more. That's what we need to do. Because since, since I've been self identifying by as white, right, I've been feeling really lonely. Like, no, nobody, nobody bothers me. Do you know, like, I walk into a supermarket, security just blank me. Do you know, I walk into W.S. Smith, security just... Normally, when I was brown, right, I would walk in, and before I even got to the entrance, the security guard's already there. Excuse me, sir. How, how may I help you? I'm like, this is boots, right? I'm like, oh, shit. Uh, toothbrush. You know, like, what, what do you do, right? So he, well, this right this way, sir. It's like having a personal shopping assistant. Guides me there, and then waits. Right? And I'm like, well, I didn't want, really want a toothbrush, but... Damn it. Um, so I buy a toothbrush, I got loads at home now. Because <laughs> I actually just want to go in and get conduct, but, you know, like, so. Um, and then he'll guide me to the till, and then wave me up by it. I'm like, wow, that is customer service. Who uh, wants to do online shopping when you can, you know, white, it doesn't happen to white people, does it? No. All right, like, I, I did this show some years ago, and um, there was like six or seven white people at the front. I asked them, like, have you ever been searched? And they looked at me blankly, like, what the hell are you doing? What is search, right? Like, I've been searched so much, you know, that I, I actually thought that I, I've been searched so intimately as well, right, that I actually thought it was a third date. Do you know, like, it was that intimate. And that was at Miami Airport as well. I had this spring in my step because I got, you know, like, brown people, we'd like to turn up early just in case. You know, it's going to take us a bit longer. So, so I got through security quite quickly, right? And I was like, wow, I got through security, right? And so there's a, like a spring in my step. And then a security, you know, one of those customs guards saw me. I think he saw the limp, you know, the, the jump in my step. And he started walking across to, to cut me off, you know, and as I'm heading for the exit. And as he's doing that, he's wearing, he's starting to put those, you know, those surgical gloves those blue surgical gloves in, in the hospital, right? He's putting those on really slowly. And then he like, yeah, the best chap line, by the way. No, no woman would be able to resist this chap line. He said, excuse me, sir, you have been randomly selected. <laughs> <laughs> number generating, it's so now. So anyway, three hours later, it was, uh, it was intimate, uh, I would like to say. And, uh, it was, uh, I, I think he rushed it, personally. Because, <laughs> you know, I wish, you know, you know we'd, we'd uh, you know, maybe had some pleasantries, maybe a glass of wine beforehand, you know. But no, none of that. So, I mean, it's, it's nice, because 
if, if, if this is why I think the black, the white lives movement matters more, should be promoted over the black lives movement because white people, you know, like if, if you don't have a girlfriend or anything like that or a wife or whatever, right, or boyfriend, right, um, you don't get touched much. You know, like, like when I'm feeling lonely, I'll just go to the airport. Right? And, and I'm so confident that sometimes I don't even take a rucksack. You know? Which is nice, right? Yeah. I, I'm also a really good immigrant, just to let you guys know. Like, I'm like, such a good... Because, like, I've, I've stolen... Since I've been here, I've stolen about six jobs. You know? <laughs> like, like, what, what do you do for work, mate? Uh, I'm an engineer. You're an engineer? Brilliant. Yeah, that's a perfect job for an Indian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Don't bother going into work on Monday. <laughs> I'll already have stolen. It's <laughs> night shift, though. Was it? I'm doing that one. <laughs> so I've stolen jobs, for example. Uh, I've stolen IDs. Joe Baines, oh, clearly, it's not my name. Yeah? <laughs> uh, I was born in India, and my mum didn't look like, hmm. We'll call him Joe, this one. Do you know, like, it doesn't happen, right? Uh, so I stole that one. I also stole the uh, accent. So I like to think, you know, that there's, a, there's, a, there's an English guy, a British guy, who I've stolen all this from, and he's walking around with an Indian accent. <laughs> <laughs> and an Indian name, do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just be... Uh, but I, I, I have stolen a lot of things. I, I recently started started stealing white women. <laughs> My current girlfriend is from Devon. Uh, white, completely white. All her family are white. I mean, obviously, she doesn't see her stealing. Crazy, yeah? She calls it kidnapping. Um, <laughs> uh, do do any of, anybody here know about Wim Hof, by the way? You go, okay, right. So I did Wim Hof. Also, so uh, during winter, I don't do it during summer, obviously, uh, I do cold showers and uh, ice baths. Does anybody do cold showers? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Is that Tazine, right? Yeah. That is. All oh, right, there you go. See? I told you she exists. <laughs> it's, it's not a figment of my imagination. She's finally here. After everybody who's been coming in, I'll be like, are you Tazine? Right? Uh -huh. <laughs> even the men, even the men. <laughs> <laughs> So like I, I do, yeah. So I, look, I'm Indian, right? So uh, you know, it means I'm not that well endowed. Right? Um, but you know, after five minutes in a cold shower, it shrinks so much that it turns into vagina, <laughs> which is why I'm in there for fifteen minutes. <laughs> I, I got to thank my wife, uh, ex-wife, for this. Um, uh, she helped me. She helped to push me along the comedy road. Uh, because uh, one day, like I was, I was uh, sitting in the, I, she was very quiet. That for what, you know, one day, and I got in the car. Right? I don't know. Like just, it does happen with women. Sometimes they will be quiet. Uh, doesn't happen often. But um, I got into the car. She's been quiet the whole day, right? And she turns around to me, and she goes, "Why are you doing this? You're not even funny." And that was it. I was like, that's it. I'm going to become a comedian. I don't care what happens. Do any of you have um, any fetishes? No? Nobody has fetishes? You, you must have a fetish. Flat male likes getting pissed on. All right. Okay. And then you, you obliged. <laughs> no? Okay. All right. No, no. I mean, I, I'm not a, I, don't, I'm, I don't have fetishes, but I am a fetish. Because right? I am so hot, it turns security guards on. Like, every time I'm anywhere near security guards, you know, they, their buttons start popping. It's like, they get, and they're ready. They're ready. It's like, you know, it's, I'm like a, a woman, a 10 out of 10 women. You know, like, you know, that, I'm like that kind of rate. Um, I, I did, um, any, no, this, this normally I would do to, like, comedians, but uh, anybody ever, you know, been to a funeral, right? You guys have been, right? And um, have you ever had a comedian there? No, right? So a, couple of, a few years back, uh, somebody hired me uh, to perform at a funeral. Not at the funeral, but you know, the, uh, the thing afterwards, the party, whatever it's called. Because um, I think the, um, the deceased wanted, um, wanted a comedian. Yeah, awake, that's it, yeah. The, you know, the deceased wanted a comedian there. Um, it, it, to, on that night, it wasn't just the deceased that was dead, you know? I, I died as well. Like, <laughs> like, 
<laughs> it just wasn't funny, you know. Like, I, I tried to do some jokes about dead people, but they just uh, they just weren't having it. I, honestly, I spent like days writing like six, seven jokes about dead. People. I can't even remember the jokes now, but uh, yeah, it was uh, it was tough. That was a really tough gig. It's not as tough as the black crowd. You, you, you've heard about this James Bond thing, right? Black James Bond, uh, how a black guy can't be. Um, well, there is one. That, I was just thinking, right? Like, like th there is one fictional character, like the Aquaman, Aquaman, what it is called, right? That he couldn't be brown, right? He, there's no possible. He would. He just wouldn't work, right? Because like, he's got like a big, long beard and he's got long hair. Now imagine a brown guy coming out of New York, you know, out of the sea to rescue, you know, America. Long, long beard, long, long hair. I mean, he would spend at least two hours in customs with me. You know? But he, on the other hand, he, he would enjoy the board waterboarding, wouldn't he? Okay. Turns out I need more material. Okay. Yeah, you thought this was going to overrun. I, the last one I did, it was overrun by 20 minutes. I think because they were hacking. So, so tell me a bit about yourselves, people. Um, now that we're here, <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> clearly, I, need more. I, I swear I'm doing exactly the same material. I just did it a lot faster today. Um, yeah, so it, it's, uh, how did you guys find this show, you know, like on, online or whatever it was? I signed up to this website called Stage Audience. It gives you like tickets for stuff. Oh, right. This is what this is place is part of, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. And how many Indians have we got in the audience? Got one. You're Indian. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I thought the other white and Indian. Yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm in brown, you know. Like, uh, sorry. Just ask me if I was made in India. Said no, I'm Indian. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can be. Yeah, I mean, you know, parents were made in India, right? Oh, by the way, I've got some. I've got some really bad news for uh, for white people. Um, your ancestors were once black. Know that about 50,000 years ago, um, because you know, we all came out of Africa. So, I mean, it's not funny, it's just a bit of, a, bit of information. Uh, anybody here into uh, psychedelics? <laughs> anybody? No, because you know, I don't know if you know about psychedelics, I don't clearly, right? Uh, but a friend of mine did tell me about them. Do you know, like, do you know about all the different psychedelics out there? No. Mushrooms, okay, yeah, yeah, mushrooms is, uh, is one of them. Uh, there's LSD, you know, like, so, so there's a hierarchy apparently, I don't know, right? Uh, but at the bottom is cannabis, right? And then you've got mushrooms, then you've got, um, then you've got LSD, which is good, ketamine, about the same, um, and MDMA, obviously, as well. Um, oh, yeah, okay. 2CB, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course he is, right? And then there's, and then above that, you know, on the next floor up will be DMT. Do you know? Uh, do, do, do you know about DMT? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then the next, if you go to the fifth floor, is uh, something called Bufo, which is five meter. Uh, it makes, do you know, all the other ones look like nothing. <laughs> so, uh, with great difficulty. I mean, I, I, I did a Bufo trip uh, some years ago. And I searched like crazy for this, right? I think I searched online. I was messaging people like, in forums, you know, all the dodgy stuff, right? And nothing, nothing was coming back. And then one day, right? I think it was Friday, I got a text. Like SMS messages randomly, right? And it was like, come tomorrow to this park. And I was like, okay, all right. And bring 200 pounds. <laughs> so I was like, I don't know who it's from, but uh, so the next day, I, all I had was my OSTA card, 200 pounds in my pocket, and my phone. Nothing else, just in case this is some sort of scam, right? Mm. So I turned up at this park, and then I waited in the park, and then I got another text saying, the, the council estate across the road, uh, knock on this door. And it looked like dodgy as hell. Uh, it's a Saturday morning, dodgy as hell. I've got 200 pounds in my pocket, no idea what's going on. I knock on the door, and then some steps come, he ushers me in and ushers me upstairs. So all this is illegal, by the way, just later. Um, he ushers me into the living room, right? 
in this really dodgy looking place, like in Cancel Flat, and there's loads of people in there, and they all look bewildered, wild just like me, and I was like, oh, right, they're all here for the same reasons. And then they took us in, one by one, into the kitchen, but there was a, a shaman there. Didn't speak any English from Peru. And uh, he would administer uh, this uh, buffer to each of us. And I, uh, how can I describe it? Just the stuff where you go on like a mad trip and find like your spirit animal and all that sort of yeah. thing. Yeah, well, it's just way above spirit animals. Is it beyond ayahuasca? Oh, it makes ayahuasca look like a walk in the park. <laughs> honestly. Like, um, but I, he, did, he did about 30 minutes of ceremonies on me, you know, all kinds of stuff, right? And it felt really good. And I thought, wow, that's it. And because he finished, right? And he goes, no, 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 we haven't even started yet. So this stuff, right? So he goes, and so there's two of them. And, he goes, and the, one of them is English, the guy that like, let me in. And he goes, look, I'm going to stand behind you. He's going to blow some smoke into this, into this pipe. And your job is to breathe that completely. And then he'll put the pipe in your mouth. And then your job is to breathe all of this in, like every single last, because you don't want to waste it. It's expensive. Right? As soon as you breathe it all in, I'm going to put my hand on your mouth and your nose so you can't breathe out. Your job is not to fight it. Your job is to hold on for dear life because they'll try to make you cough because it's smoke, right? So I'm like, all right, fair enough, right? I've paid 200 pounds. I'm, I'm going to get my money's worth, right? So he does that. He put, puts his hand on my mouth and I, I'm trying to hold because I want to cough. I'm trying to hold for dear life, right? Oh my God. And then I just sort of pass out, right? And, but it pass out in, a, in the most beautiful way. So I sort of fall backwards, catches me, lays me out. And I'm not kidding you, my consciousness goes straight up. Like in about 10 seconds, I am God. I, I, I mean, like, it's hard to explain. It's like, um, it's the most beautiful place it is possible to be in, do you know? Um, it was like having the, the most, it was like being in the most perfect love, the most perfect joy, the most perfect happiness. Do you know like, all of the positive most having the most perfect of all of those emotions all at the same time. I was up there for two hours. It's only supposed to last half an hour. So every half an hour, the shaman and the other guy would just slap me. Do you know that? Like, Joe. What's going on? Are you, are you okay? And I'm like, I'm not coming back. I'm definitely not coming back. Uh, and so I just sort of make a small sound going like that, you know, like just to, so that they would disturb me the least. And then they were, oh, okay, it's fine. And then in half an hour later, they slapped me again. And then eventually they pulled me out and uh, put me on the side. It was, I'm telling you, I mean, I'm not promoting taking <laughs> psychedelics, clearly, right? If you ever come across it, take your both hands, honestly. It is like, <clears throat> and it, I found out later on that this is like it makes it, it's about fifty times more powerful than ayahuasca. I would say some some. What's it called again? Uh, bufo. 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 Yeah. yeah. Peruvian. Um, it's it's from uh, South America and even I think America. Um, it's basically a toad, and the toad is called bufo or something. So. Um, and this toad has no natural enemies. So basically, it excretes it on its skin. And, uh, if, and, and it has no energy because it hardens on the skin. And so if any animal picks it up in its mouth, it goes straight into saliva, straight into the and they have, they're gone, right? Uh, but for humans, uh, we just get, we just become God. Right? <laughs> so that's, uh, that's my Bufo experience. Um, yeah, just, just saying, don't do it. Um, it's, uh, it's very badly. It's just, uh, and it's not addictive, by the way. Yeah, obviously, it's not like cocaine or heroin. You know, those two are bad chili. Did you speak to the Indians? Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was one guy. Actually, yeah, that's that was the interesting thing. There was one guy. There was an old guy uh, in the in the living room, and he was agitated. He was on edge. You know, like and talking really quickly. And like, when I had my experience, there was no resistance from me, right? And I, and I think I couldn't have resisted it. Do you know, it just took me out so fast that the chance to resist was just wasn't there. And I thought, wow, this, you, nobody can resist this. So if you just give it to anybody, boom, they're gone, right? 
And then this guy came in, after about a third or fourth other people, and he was still agitated, right? And then they gave it to him, and he was, and he fought it, really fought it, so he didn't go up at all. And they went, look, mate, you've got to relax, you've got to let go. And so they got him to relax, gave him another shot. He still resisted, he wouldn't go up. So you can resist it. He wanted to resist. I think he didn't want to let go because you have to surrender. Do you know, like with these things, you have to completely let go and surrender and trust that everything is going to be perfect. And he, and he wasn't willing to do that. So, uh, yeah. I, I, I actually found out about psychedelics uh, in hospital. Do you know, so uh, um, some years ago, I damaged myself, like properly damaged, but I put myself in hospital. Uh, disabled, all that kind of stuff. So I needed help uh, getting in and out of bed and all that kind of stuff. And eventually they discharged me uh, back back home. And uh, I was quite lucky. My nurse was quite awake. And she was like, look, I'm giving you a ton of drugs. Your job is to get on them as fast as possible so they will kill you. Because, you know, they have massive side effects. So somebody somewhere managed to get a hold of cannabis oil for me. And this stuff was amazing because it took all the pain away. Uh, which the drugs, to a certain degree, did, but not completely. But it also put me to sleep. And so for I was taking it twice a day, and within two or three months, uh, I was healed because I could sleep. You know, when you can't sleep, you can't heal. So that's, uh, that's the uh, second. So I was like, because up to that point, I was always like, say no to drugs. Drugs are bad. Drugs are evil. Say no to drugs. Right? And then and I was like, well, hang, and I Googled the shit out of cannabis because I didn't know anything about it beforehand. And there were no, you can't overdose on it. You can overdose, but there are no negative side effects. Zero. I couldn't find anything on the internet. I was like, bloody hell. And, uh, and it helped me, you know, heal. So I was like, well, if they lied about that, what else have they lied to me about? And as soon as I asked that question, I kid you not, the entire universe opened up to me. And it basically just started feeding me psychedelics. <laughs> like, it was just literally, they were like falling around me. That. They were just literally, it was like, here, have some LSD, here's some ketamine. Mm -hmm. like, it was just 2CB, um, whatever, right? That's not the universe, that's a drug dealer. Oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, before that point, I hadn't come across them at all. But as soon as I asked that question, boom, they just appeared. Like, literally, anybody I would, I'd be sitting next to on the train or the They'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I've, I've got some, yeah, I've got, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, <laughs> like, literally, like, it was almost like I was drawn to these people, do you know, so I've done everything, I, um, I've done DMT maybe 400 times, uh, and DMT, I don't know if you guys know, is known as the uh, God particle or something, or God uh, psychedelic or something, it's, uh, it's insane, uh, the highs you get that. Um, any, anybody, so I, I'm, I'm tantric, that's uh, just, Beach. Sorry? Beach. Because it is, yeah. We're in the same class, damn it, right? Really good. Um, well, yeah, so, um, so we're both tantric and. Uh, and anyway, tantra. Tantra. Uh, it's. Um, Sweetie, why can't you stop yourself? Come on. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant, mate. That's, that's the most succinct, succinct way of putting it, yeah. Uh, tantra is, 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 is yoga, right? But you use the sensual or sexual energies uh, in the practice to uh, evolve yourself and to take yourself to the next level. Uh, so it's basically, it's, uh, sexual energy is the most powerful energy in your body. And if you can harness it, you can use it for personal development. So you can redirect it into your business, into growing, in any, whatever you want, right? It's just the way you don't use it. <laughs> <laughs> That was okay, so the reason for that is because we've got our chakras, you know, the seven chakras up here, and what you're doing with uh, sexual energy is you're pushing that up the, uh, up the chakras. So you're pushing it up and, you know, up to your crown chakra. So that's, uh, and uh, I've been doing that for four years, and uh, for, for guys. Four years for one hour, <laughs> well, more than one, but yeah. Anybody had a full body orgasm? I know the women have, but uh, the men? No? No. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, if you haven't had a full body, it's like, it's like saying I'm a virgin. It's like, 
I, I, I tell you what. You want to fluff me later on? Yeah. <laughs> we'll do it on stage now, right? No, no, mate. Like, a normal orgasm would be like, I, I'd put it now up, I would like a 1 out of 10, right? This is like 15 out of 10. Uh, my first uh, full body organ, this, this was, I think, about a year ago when I had my first full body organ. Oh my god, like, it was, it's like a treacle, right? Warm treacle, and it's slowly, that, well, before, before the warm treacle effect, um, my heart started racing. I was like, what the hell's going on? Why is my heart racing? And then as soon as my heart started racing, th this warm treacle slowly started filtering around my body, do you know? And at first I was like, what the hell is this? But it's the most beautiful experience in the world. It's, it's, the, it's like every cell in your body, as it's spreading out, is, is having an orgasm. And that orgasm, for me anyway, it can last two hours. Can you imagine being in a full internal body orgasm for two hours? And when you're in it, because I do a lot of Wim Hof and breath work and all kinds of stuff, you can intensify it. You can control it. So... <laughs> it's amazing, by the way, just let you know. So, mate, honestly. <laughs> I'm trying, Two hours. I'm trying to work out how this warm treacle thing is working. Also, the warm treacle <laughs> thing, it, it, it's that orgasm, but it doesn't just suddenly go in in, throughout your entire body. It slowly spreads throughout your cells. Like from what I can figure out, it's spreading slowly through your entire body. And it's like every cell, as it's hitting each cell, is having an orgasm. And then while I was in it, I was like, oh my God. And I, it took me a, you know, a few seconds to go, oh, that's what it is, right? And a, as you're in it, my brain went, oh, wait a minute, you know, you can intensify it. So then I started doing uh, Breath of Fire, Wim Hof, and all that kind of stuff to intensify it. And I just kept intensifying it. It's just, like, obviously, right? Uh, and eventually. You like a little ball of Russell Brand, didn't you? Sorry? Like a little ball of Russell Brand. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing all that sort of stuff, isn't he? I am, yeah, yeah, yeah. Russell Brand, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I used to have hair, by the way, uh, until I got married. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding, right? As soon as I got married, within five years, my hair started falling out. <laughs> like, it's just, it was just, it was like, like there was a, and, and by, by the way, my hair started growing back. I don't know if you've seen it. It started going like it used to be completely gone, uh, like after there. Uh, but in the last six months or seven, eight months or whatever, it, is, it started growing back. Uh, that's since I got divorced, basically. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah. so if you if you're going bold and you're married, you know what to do. <laughs> Just, uh, yeah. Oh, I'll leave you with this. I think we should uh, we should end with this. Uh, don't, but this is a bit of life advice for you. Don't die a virgin. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Don't, don't, don't die. Because, I'll tell you why. Because there are terrorists waiting for you up there. <laughs> oh, you had to explain that to her. Next you'll be explaining fluffing to her as well, wouldn't you? <laughs> well, where are you from, by the way? Moldova. Where? You know Ukraine? Yeah. Romania? You're that tiny little country, right? Yeah, but it's enough. <laughs> <laughs> Size isn't everything! Yeah! <laughs> Look at me! Size isn't everything! You should tell him about Moldova then. Oh, uh, you mean Shungai? No, Moldova. Moldova. Oh. Tell me about that. Which one, sorry? Can you? Oh, well, we need to have a chat after this. <laughs> we can't get that shit with passport, so I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Moldova, isn't that a tax haven or something? No. No, there's another country around Liechtenstein, isn't it? No. Uh, far away. Far away, yeah. I, I, I used to live in uh, Switzerland. Because um, my you know, ex-wife lived there. Uh, and I don't know, do you guys know about Switzerland? It is like the most perfect country in the world. Like, it is absolutely beautiful. And, well, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, but however perfect it is, it did have one massive flaw. 
and my ex-wife and uh, in-laws lived there. <laughs> and it was just too small for the three of us, so I'm, I'm not even kidding. I, I'm, like, I'm, not, I'm not staying here now. Uh, so I left the country. But it was amazing. It was, I had some, yeah, I had some of the most insane times. Do you know it looks better than the postcards, by the way, just to let you know. Do you know those postcards you see of Switzerland, yeah. of the lakes, like uh, Geneva or whatever it is? It's, it's literally, the, it looks better than those postcards. That's how good it is. Can you believe it? Right, all right, we'll bring it to a close. Thank you very much. What time is it now, mate? 20 past. All right. Should we bring it to a close? <laughs> yeah, all right. All right, the, the, no. thank you very much. Um, yeah, thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Um, and week, or whatever it is. So, uh, yeah, uh, normally this would be in Edinburgh. I'd be like, uh, put some money in the bucket. But, you know, clearly that's not the case here. Uh, so don't put any money in the bucket, because there isn't one. Um, but, yeah, enjoy. Thank you very much. All right, thanks. <laughs> Thank you.